Thanks for tuning in to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. We all get excited about using some of the new things that are really working in agriculture. And some of the newest and most exciting things are happening in seed treatments right now. We're going to talk about corn seed treatments on today's show. All right, Darren wants to talk about new stuff. I want to talk about really, really old things like potassium. So we're going back to the very basics of agriculture. Potassium is incredibly important, not only for your crop, but also for your soil. And we want to talk today about how much potassium do you actually need to raise a great crop? I thought you were going to talk about like ancient dinosaurs and uh, <laughs> it's all and part of fish it, it that all, are decaying, and we've got right. these deposits it, out exactly. there. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Let's talk about the Dead Sea too. Those there potassium we go. That, that will make so, us lots yes. more money on our farm next year. Okay. Great. 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 Well, while Brian's talking about that, I'm going to focus on stopping our weed of the week. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed a little later in the show. But first, here's our farm basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we wanted to talk a little bit about the costs to farm. Now, there are lots of different crops out there, there are lots of different farming methods out there, but we wanted to talk about a couple of things that we do on our own farm, corn and soybeans, because there are a lot of non-farmers out there who say, wow, the price of corn is $3, and 12 years ago it was $1.50, farmers should be making all kinds of money. <laughs> well, unfortunately, not only did the price of grain go up, so did all our costs. So we wanted to run through some of those things today. And I want to talk about this as well. Let's talk about the difference between a cost and an investment. And, and yes, you say, I'm spending this money on one item, but what is the return going to be? And as farmers, with every decision that we make when it comes to dollars and cents, we have to look at how much does this cost us and then how much are we going to get back? Because fertilizer, for example, we wouldn't put it out on our crop if that didn't mean we're going to get more yield so we've got more net dollars at the end of the year. All right, so let's just take for example, and I do have a sheet in front of me because there are so many things, and I look at some of the stuff that we're spending See, this money is, on. This is Brian. Money this is what Brian loves to do. He's got a spreadsheet exactly. with lots of numbers on it. This is how farming <laughs> is. We've got all these items here that we've got to pay for throughout the yep. year, and many farmers will look at it just like that of what is going to be my total as I go. Some will also talk about what's my cost per bushel, and it's tough to know what the cost per bushel is going to be exactly because we don't know how many bushels we're going to have That's until right. the end of the year. That's so we've right. got to use past history to try to make some wise decisions. All right, so let's just say, for example, it's a farmer around here who's getting good yields in our area in South Dakota at 200 bushel corn, $3 corn. That's $600 per acre. It sounds like a lot. But then I go to seed. Well, seed corn today is roughly $220 a bag at 32,000 plants per acre. There's 88 bucks. I look at the seed treatment for six. Some insecticides, seven. Pre-emerge herbicide, 15. I got Roundup. I've got another herbicide. I got some foliar fertilizer. I start adding all these things up. I spend a lot of money there. But in addition to that, I go, you know what? I got a fertilizer for my crop. I need to do some soil testing to figure out how to spend my fertilizer dollars. I have equipment, repairs, fuel drying expense, crop insurance, interest, cash rent, and that's really the biggest thing. The number one sheet, number one cost as I run down the list here is cash rent in our area is around $200. And I run through all these costs and I go, uh-oh, I'm at about $600 in terms of expenses and I have $600 in income. That means I made nothing. Well, if you're listening to this and you say, well, hey, hold on, Brian, now can't you just get cheaper land? Yes, you can. You can find land that you can rent for less money per acre, but it also doesn't have the potential to raise as much yield. And you can say, well, can't you find cheaper seed? Sure, there's cheaper seed out there, but it doesn't have the potential to get quite as much yep. yield. So you have to make those trade-offs as you're making these decisions. Yep, and the reason why we wanted to bring this up is not to say, uh, woe is me and all farming is bad or anything else. There's still tremendous potential in farming, but some of our challenges are these. What is cash rent? What is the cost of land? What is the cost of equipment and fertilizer and seed and all the things that go into it to make a great crop? So we as farmers have to spend an enormous amount of time learning 
trying new things and trying to figure out, okay, how do we squeeze out a few dollars here, being very wise with our time management and our money management. I thought you were gonna say the big challenge was we have to spend all this money up front without yep. knowing what we're gonna get for a yield in the yep. end. And you think about uh, a paycheck. If you're working a regular job and you get a paycheck every week or every two weeks, that's great. You know what that paycheck's gonna be based on how much work you put in. If you say, well, I worked a few extra hours this week, great, you're gonna get a little bigger paycheck or I know I'm gonna be on vacation, so maybe I'll have a few less hours. You can plan for those kinds of things. But with farmers, they're planning on, all right, I have to do all these things to get 200 bushel corn. And what if the weather just doesn't work out this year and we get 180 bushel corn? Or what if you have that year that the weather's great and everything's perfect and you get an extra 10 bushels or an extra 20 bushels? You don't know when those are going to come. Yeah, but there are a lot of things on the farm that the farmer can control. And the two things I wanted to leave you with for farmers Farmers, you got to look at bushels. Whatever you can possibly do, get smarter all the time. Try new things in your farm because you need more bushels. More bushels would solve a lot of problems. Okay, that's on the farmer side. From the non farmer side, I just want you to understand that hey, for farmers, we have to do a lot of work, a tremendous amount of work just to survive. And we're all trying to get better. And at the same time, by the way, in the United States, we have the safest, healthiest, most abundant food supply in the world. So that's thanks to the American farmer. I think the farmer's doing a great job, and in many cases, that farmer is not earning a lot of money. One other thing that can add to the farmer's bottom line is if he gets great weed control. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed later in the show. Celebrate 175 years of Case IH equipment heritage with a limited edition Case skid steer or compact track loader painted with the same red paint of the venerable Case IH farm equipment line. Only 175 are being built and they're going fast. Built to the same specifications on the same assembly line as the award-winning regular Case models, these machines are a working piece of history. Get yours before they're all gone. Hurry into your local Titan Machinery location or go to www.red175.com to learn more today. Leading the charge in strip tillage for more than a decade, the Soil Warrior brings the future to your farm today. N, P, and K. They're critical for a healthy crop. Improve their availability and your yield potential with Quick Roots Microbial Seed Inoculant. Quick Roots technology contains two powerful microbes that can help improve access to key nutrients, and it's available in an easy to apply formulation. Simply mix it directly into your dry planter box and your seeds will be covered. Learn more at MonsantoBioAg.com slash QuickRoots. We love the quality, we love the construction. We're looking forward to working with Morton in the future. They have this down to a science, they know exactly what you want, they know how to make it happen, it's an easy process. I would definitely recommend Morton. From the first time I met the salesman, to the last nail that the crew put in. It has been a positive and professional experience. I'm so happy I found Morton because they just make the job so easy. Find the building of your dreams at mortonbuildings.com. The Guardian Air Twin Spray Nozzle from Hypro produces a twin spray pattern with air inducted droplets for superior coverage, even in dense canopies. Be effective and efficient with your spray application this season with the Guardian Air Twin. Hypro, helping you spray better. There are 6,272,640 square inches in an acre. We count it. Why? Because we designed the TigerMate 255 field cultivator and 2000 series early riser planter to maximize every single one. So when you create the most level seed bed in the industry and target a nickel size area to plant a seed and never miss, you'll know in high efficiency farming, there's one name to count on, Case IH. Rethink productivity. Learn more at caseih.com slash every inch. We're going to talk about seed treatments just a little bit and when you think about soybean seed treatments I think it's great because you can choose what you want when you go to pick up your seed at your seed dealer you can say you know I want this seed treatment on or that seed treatment and this one I don't think pays so I don't want that one on corn seed the seed company chooses for you and 
why are they choosing the things they choose? We're going to talk about some of the different components going on seed today and some things that you may want to demand from your seed company. Well, Darren, you say the seed corn company decides. They decide what does get on the seed, but you as a farmer can put more things on if you wanted to. But let's start with what does a seed company put on exactly? So what do most seed companies put on their seed? Well, most of the time they're putting on fungicides and insecticides. So they'll put on typically two maybe even three different fungicides, and then they'll add a neonic insecticide as well. All right, how about, can I put more insecticide on, or should I ask the seed dealer for more insecticide on my seed? Well, there are certainly more things that you could add on, and when we talk about that insecticide, you'll see, for example, poncho levels going from 250 up to 500 in some cases. I think that's a good thing if you've got heavy wireworm pressure. All right, so let's talk about fungicide. As a farmer, can I put more fungicide on and should I put more fungicide on on the seed? Well, when you're putting a liquid seed treatment onto seed that's already treated, over treating with additional liquid can be a little tricky and can lead to some problems. So to say, I'm gonna take a liquid fungicide at home and spray it on my corn seed, and think you're gonna do a great job doing that, I don't know about that. I don't know that I would go that far, but what if the seed company was to put more fungicide on? I think that would be great. You look at Pythium, for example, the industry has been using metalaxyl or one of its derivatives for the last 40 years, and really that's the only thing that's great on Pythium. Well, there are other active ingredients out there that are working very well. And as we see metal axle and those types of products working less effectively out in the field, I think it is time for more fungicide on the seed. Okay, here's my next question for Darren. How about more nutrients? Because I've heard some seed companies say, well, you know what, we could put uh, whatever it is, iron on that seed or maybe some other nutrient. How do you feel about putting any more nutrients directly on the seed? There are only so many pounds of nutrients that could be put on seeds. So you're going to get such a low dose out there. It's certainly not something that's going to help you out throughout the whole season. Could it help and give you a little bit of boost early in the season? Yeah, it could. But how much zinc are you going to get on that seed? How much iron are you going to get on that seed? I know there are some guys out there doing it and doing it well but you really have to be realistic about this. I'd get in a two by two or something in for if I wanted to put a good deal of nutrients out. Here again, if I was going to treat the seed with fertility, I'd be very concerned about, am I going to hurt germination if I get too much on there? And especially if I have to carry that seed over for a year, what are the effects on germination? So I get really concerned about that. All right, how about biologicals? What do you think about biologicals, Darren? I am huge on biologicals on the seed if they work. Now there are a lot of different products out there and it's really important to be selective here because some of those biologicals will also have plant growth regulators with them that may not play well with other things that you're doing in your crop production program. So be real curious about what's in those products. And if it's say bacteria and fungi, for example, in most cases, that's gonna be just fine. We've been using quick grits for many years. There's some other biologicals that we're starting to use on our farm too, as testing shows that some of these new technologies are paying even more. Last question, Nemastrike from Monsanto. It's a new chemical nematicide that they are putting on seed and some seed companies are putting on seed. How do you feel about that one? Does the product work? The answer is yes. We think the product is good. The question is, do you have harmful nematodes at levels that would require you to treat? That's a great question because most farmers across the United States, when you ask them, what are your nematode levels in corn? Well, they don't really know, and they haven't ever measured that. So it's going to be something for Monsanto to build this market up and, and show what kind of things farmers need to be looking for out in fields, and then get some seed out to the farmer to do some testing on a farm scale, not just at a university level or in replicated trials. The number one thing we want you to do when you're ordering your seed corn this year is ask what seed treatments come on my seed. There is an absolute difference from one company to the next, and that can be some of the reason why some seed companies have cheaper seed and others more expensive. Notice one thing we didn't say was put on the seed was weed control, because you need to get out there and treat the whole field if you have a problem with this week's Weed of the Week. Can you identify it? And now we have Jenny in the field talking with Farmer Dave. Dave, this corn has some noticeable differences. Tell us what's going on here. Well, I know AgriLiquid had helped me out a lot last year, but I've been using my old fertilizer program for a long time. So I decided to do a comparison, AgriLiquid versus a conventional program. So far, the differences are pretty obvious. Looks clear to me. 
Absolutely. AgriLiquid is going to take the championship here. Out here, great yield starts with great weed control. That's why I choose the system that makes the difference. The system I put to work. Because only I know what it takes out here. Yields what it's all for. But keeping my fields clean all season, that's what it's all about. This is my field. Being a farmer means securing your land and livelihood for the future. Harvest Solutions from Capello USA have the grit to get you there. Our product lines for corn, sunflowers, and forage are designed for efficiency and longevity, preventing harvest loss while minimizing maintenance and downtime. To do everything you can to advance your farmland to the next generation, call us at 855-CAPELLO or visit us at capellousa.com. Capello USA, Italian craftsmanship, American grit. In today's market, growers deserve products that bring true, measurable value to their farm. My name is Wade Barnes and I am the co-founder and CEO of Farmer's Edge. We believe the only way to understand value is to experience it yourself. Try our integrated data solutions with no commitments until May 2018. I know we can make a difference on your farm. Your data is your asset. Own it and use it. In life, when you put the max in, you get the max out. It's no different for your corn, which is why 40 years of effort have gone into proving that Instinct and Anserve nitrogen stabilizers do more than just stabilize nitrogen, they maximize nitrogen. So your corn gives you the max in return. When you're soil testing this fall, I'm going to challenge you, look for a couple different measurements on our nutrient of the day, potassium, because parts per million alone only tells a portion of the story. Certainly you need to know how many parts per million you have in the soil with potassium because it's going to take a certain number of pounds per acre to raise a great crop. Okay, that makes complete sense. But in addition to that, we want you to look at the base saturation test. That's going to show you the ratio of potassium to a number of other nutrients in the soil, including calcium, magnesium, and hydrogen. So when we start looking at potassium in total, uh, we've got to have enough to raise that crop, right? But in addition to that, we want in the range of 4% to 8% base saturation K. So if you're having standability issues, if you're seeing potassium deficiency, if you're seeing in your tissue results, hey, my potassium is a little bit on the low side, that very well could have to do with the fact that your base saturation K levels are below 4%. And if you're taking late season plant tissue analysis and noticing, hey, my potassium levels have really dropped off, or as you're harvesting, you notice these standability issues, or like corn leaves towards the bottom of the plant where they're firing on the outside edges of the leaves, you know you've got a potassium issue. So if you're thinking, I have lots of pounds out here, how come it's not getting into my crop? Now it's time to plan your fertilizer out for next season. So a couple of things that you may consider doing. One, you've got a lot of area of soil out there that your crop has to explore. And many times your root system's only able to get to a small portion of that. You may consider banding your potassium and moving it closer to the row. Now that could be done a couple different ways. You could be doing it in a two by two, for example. You could put a little bit in furrow with something like SureK, uh, but you can't really put a whole lot of potassium in the furrow with most sources that are out there. So some guys will do this two by two type program and that can work fine. The other thing you may consider is banding some deep. On our farm, we'll often use strip till and place potassium down eight or 10 inches deep, right beneath where we're going to plant next year's corn or soybean crop. And right there, I might've caught you as well. You say, wait a minute, soybeans? I, I just, I'm gonna put it out in front of my corn. No, we fertilize both corn and soybeans, and we've seen potassium as another one of those nutrients that's had a huge impact on getting our soybean yields up. One of the things too is when you look at the source of potassium that you're getting, Darren mentioned SureK liquid, we like at least some amount of liquid every year in every crop because 
if you go dry potassium, sometimes it can take a long time for that dry potassium to break down, especially in areas of the country like we're in, where we have very inconsistent rainfall. Potassium certainly is one of the primary nutrients that you need, and your crop needs large quantities of potassium. When you're building your program for this coming season, look at the crop removal rates of potassium for the yield that you raised, but also look at what that stover needs. We talked about standability. It's critical to have lots of potassium available for our crop. If you've got potassium levels already up in that 6 to 8% base saturation for most crops, you're probably already there on medium to heavy soils. You got enough. It may be something else that's your yield limiting factor, but make sure that you're addressing potassium in your program. The number one thing we'll leave you with today is test for parts per million with potassium, but also get the base saturation test. We really want those numbers for K in the 4 to 8% range, and what we're finding for many of the very high yield farmers, those numbers are in the 6 to 8% range. Shoot for that, and you should be looking at higher yields and better standability in the future. And if you want to reach those high yields Brian's talking about, you have to stop our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to control it coming up next. The Weed of the Week is brought to you by Dow AgroSciences. Finish the fight against tough weeds with the Enlist Weed Control System. Weeds are tough. But we're tougher with unrivaled weed control, reduced drift, and near zero volatility. So, who's tough now? <laughs> Weed of the Week is Field Pennycress. Yeah, those might not be little dandelions that you're looking at out there or little thistle type plants. It could be Field Pennycress in the rosette stage and in the fall it's a great time to get it under control. We get questions all the time about alfalfa fields and oh, the pennycress got up before the alfalfa could shade it out. Here's your shot. You could get out in the fall and get ahead of this tough weed. Yeah, but how are you going to kill it in alfalfa? Usually if guys have a really bad pennycress problem and they don't have Roundup alfalfa, I tell them tear up the stand. What do you suggest? Well, I like Pursuit or Raptor. I think at the higher rates we do a pretty nice job on pennycress, especially if we can get it before it bolts. The other thing that you could do is get out there with Buck Troll where that's labeled. That may be another option for you to get ahead of the pennycress, if yes. you can get good coverage. Well, yeah, and it all depends on how bad it is. I'm assuming you're talking very, very bad, but yes. Pennycress can be controlled with a lot of herbicides. Where we commonly see this, though, is in non-crop areas or in strip-till and no-till. In non-crop areas, 2,4-D is very good. In strip-till and no-till, certainly you can use 2,4-D, dicamba, Roundup is effective, but we really like the spraying done in the fall. Well, I like burn down options in the spring too. If we're out there burning down ahead of a crop, I like Verdict in corn. I yep. like Authority MTZ in front of soybeans. You can put other products with that to heat it up a little bit more. Oftentimes we're putting in an oil to heat up either Verdict with, that has Sharpen in it or the Authority type products. Yep, and straight Sharpen would be best in any wheat crop but again, Sharpen or anything containing Sharpen is only for pre-emerge use. Well, that's all the time we have for this week's Weed, but Iron Talk is coming up next. The desire to bring real-world solutions to growers' difficult production challenges has led Bayer to introduce Credenz, our national brand of soybean seed, backed by years of research in Smart Genetics. Smart Genetics is based on four concepts state-of-the-art breeding allows Bayer to identify key traits and characteristics that bring value and protection to your soybean production situation. Next is herbicide tolerant traits. The flexibility of multiple trait platforms allows growers to pick the most effective weed control system for their farm. Next is tailored varieties. With a robust portfolio, Credenz offers many solutions for difficult situations that you may experience along with our best-in-class agronomic service team to support variety selection. And last is ongoing innovation. Bayer is continuing to invest in ways to improve yields and increase the profitability on your farm.
Introducing the SoilMax ZD48, the newest addition to the SoilMax Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The SoilMax ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before. In today's market, growers deserve products that bring true, measurable value to their farm. My name is Wade Barnes and I am the co-founder and CEO of Farmer's Edge. We believe the only way to understand value is to experience it yourself. Try our integrated data solutions with no commitments until May 2018. I know we can make a difference on your farm. Your data is your asset. Own it and use it. And now we have Jenny in the field talking with Farmer Dave. Dave, how is your season shaping up? Well, I used a starting lineup that my agri-liquid coach suggested in furrow, and the plants jumped right out of the ground. We had some wind damage here, but I called my agro-liquid rep. He came out and suggested a foliar application of Furterane. It perked right up. So you're feeling good about finishing out this season? Absolutely. Agro-liquid is my championship team. Thanks, Dave. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you and only you to the information you need most from your equipment from anywhere at any time. AFS Connect, only from Case IH. As harvest begins, soil testing and fall fertilizer plans follow closely behind. Today's Iron Talk should give you some food for thought to increase the return on your fertility investments. Fall fertilization can be great because you give dry fertilizer products like MAP and DAP more time to break down and become available, plus it's one less job to do in the spring. However, it's my contention that many farm operations will be wasting money on fertilizer this fall. And that means there's an opportunity to get a better return on your fertilizer investment dollar. Here are a few ideas. First, fall urea is a bad idea. Urea is not the best form of N to use when you've got months before you'll plant and there's a possibility of heavy snow or rain between now and then. Anhydrous or ammonium sulfate would be better options. Otherwise, wait until spring to save yourself 10, 20, maybe even 60% of the product you'll lose by putting it out now. Second, banding is much more efficient. Especially if you have high calcium and high pH soils, nutrient tie-up is a real thing. For example, when calcium ties up phosphorus, it becomes insoluble in water and may never come available for a future crop. By banding, you keep the nutrients concentrated so they naturally resist tie-up. Also, you can protect nutrients like phosphorus by using a veil or a protected phosphorus source like ProGerminator. Third, deep placement is much better than shallow incorporation or leaving nutrients on the soil surface. We prefer to use a knife to put down our P and K 10 inches deep where they're safe and available for our crop all throughout the growing season. Protecting nutrients from runoff and nutrient stratification in the top few inches of soil is good for crop production, but also good for our whole industry when it comes to preserving water quality. Fall fertilization is going to happen to some degree, and it's not always a bad thing. Just pick the right products and use the proper equipment to be efficient and environmentally conscious. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now, back to the show. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. The Quick Belt from Norwood Sales is your all-around grain handling solution. Our conveyor-based system uses an 18-inch belt in a 10-inch tube, which minimizes seed damage while moving more than 10,000 bushels an hour. Keep your grain and your farm moving with the Quick Belt from Norwood Sales. We hope you've enjoyed our show today. If you're looking for more agronomic information, we invite you to tune in to the Ag PhD radio show. It's on Sirius XM channel 147 at 2 p.m. Central each weekday. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. A healthy soil helps to keep our air and water clean while providing a medium for productive crops, pastures, and shelter belts. It takes good management practices and care to accomplish this. To learn more about how farmers are improving the health of their soils, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.